All right, this video is for one of my subscribers who will remain unnamed because I don't know if he wants me to share his name. But he has a high-end pencil grinder that he's having troubles with and he wanted me to do a teardown of one. So this particular pencil grinder is very cheap. I forget how much I paid for it, but it was less than $50. So I've already removed the hose, and on mine there's a set screw here. The, the exhaust comes out around this area. here, And when I thread it apart, it will come apart at the body of the tool. This piece here has the valve built into it. So the air valve is built into here and we can see it says off and on. So if I hook this up to the air hose, I turn this dial, this way is off and this way is on. I'll try to slide this apart so we can have a look to see how it works. And what do you know, it actually comes apart. So the air comes from the air compressor and it is directed through this inlet hole and there's an o-ring around the inlet on the inside of this dial. And when it's in the off position the o-ring is covering that so no air can come out. And then what happens when I turn it the o-ring comes off of the dial and there is a groove on the inside of this a couple of degrees over that opens this passage to this passage right here and the o-ring is right here in my case the next step is to take this spanner wrench that comes supplied with the tool and take a rag and put it around the body of the tool. I'm going to use channel locks. You could use a vise with soft jaws. And then we spin off the front side of the tool. I'm going to remove the collet from the chuck here. And I'm going to place the nut back on place. Just finger tight. I'm going to get my plastic hammer and I'm going to tap on the housing. Here I have my plastic hammer. I'm going to give a couple of taps on the back housing and see if it moves. That sounds very solid like it is not going to move. So we're going to try to break it free by gently heating the case. As you can see, I have the torch just barely turned on here. Alright, this is telling me that it's about 140 Celsius. I'm going to get it a little hotter than that. So we'll take it up to 200 or 250. One seventy two. Hundred and eighty. Two hundred and seventeen. That's good. Now we're going to try to tap it apart and hopefully we get some results. Nice. So I actually got it to move. Okay, so we're going to give this a try. 
And if it doesn't work, you guys can just say it was my idea. And I got the motor to move. It's actually poking out through the bottom of the case there, as you can see. I happened to come across a pipe fitting that is the exact inside diameter of the motor. So I can sit that on there like that and then I should be able to drive the motor out. Although it has cooled down considerably so I might need to heat it again. Alright, so we've got a pin and the bottom piece of the motor. So we still have the main motor housing, the front motor housing, and the rotor assembly that still have to come out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put something in there so that I can continue driving it through into this bottom piece. I wouldn't recommend you do this with a good drill bit because it may ruin your good drill bit. The problem that we're running into now is that the bottom is flush with the housing so it's hard to line it up properly. I'm going to get a steel hammer and we're going to move this onto the concrete. The concrete has less give to it and the steel hammer has less give to it, which means more of the energy is going to get transferred into the shaft. And as you can see, it's working. We've got the main motor housing coming out. The main motor housing, oh, actually that's a bearing housing, so there's actually two rear motor housings. Alright, we also have some vanes here that are making their way out, so we're going to take them out and set them aside so they don't get damaged. I've got to be careful here to line this up before I start banging on it real hard. Oh, there's the third vein out of the motor. So we're just going to tap on this lightly. We've got it to move a little bit. I'm not sure if the camera can pick that up, but I've got it slightly sticking through so I can line it up better. Now I've got it sticking through I'm sure the camera can pick that up and I can be a little bit more aggressive with it. We're getting pretty close to being out. I'm going to switch out the top part for a socket. We've got it out about a centimeter now. I'm checking on it repeatedly and now it's actually going to come out with fingers. Alright, so there we have the main motor housing, our body. So we'll set that up on the bench. And now we have the rotor assembly and the front motor housing that's still going to be a little bit stubborn to get out. So we're going to keep trying. We have to make sure that we have enough room so that I don't drive this into the concrete floor. Because if I do that, I could damage something.
you can hear that last hit sounded different that's because the shaft actually touched the floor now it wasn't hard enough to damage anything but so you just got to be careful for that so now what i need is something longer than this to allow me to keep driving it through so what i'm going to do is i'm going to stand this on top of the socket and that will allow me to continue hammering it through. All right, so now we're to the point where the front motor housing is starting to poke through. And now we've got to make sure that the front motor housing is lined up with the hole in this, uh... yeah, there we go. So now we've got everything removed from the air tool with a whole bunch of special tools all right so the only thing that we don't have a part now are the front bearings on this tool which are right here there's two of them in this case and there's also the front motor housing which in this case is basically just a washer or a plate and the rotor is threaded onto the collet or the body here. Most of you are not going to have a lathe at your disposal, but I do, so I'm going to show you how to get this apart using a lathe. I've got the tool on here, and now I can break free this piece and remove the bearings from the main rotor. So we have the collet nut right here. We have the collet itself. We have the collet body. We have the motor rotor or the main motor shaft we have in this case two bearings a washer which is basically the front motor housing and there is also an inner sleeve We have the body of the tool. We have the main motor housing. Here are the three vanes for the motor, which go into the motor shaft. The rear motor housing with the bearing. This is what I would call a secondary motor housing, I guess. It is a piece that they install to uh, divert the air into the direction that they want it to go. So the air comes in through, let me get something as a pointer here. So the air comes in through here, comes up through this port, and travels into the motor that way. I'll explain how the air travels through this in a, a we have a locator pin, which goes in here and locks these pieces together. This brass piece, which uh, channels the air to the back of the motor. We have the valve itself. And then we have this collar. And then on the front side of the motor, we've got this piece which locks everything into the body of the tool. So now what I'll do is explain the air path through the tool and how the motor works and then I will assemble it and show the assembly of it in detail. I'm not sure what some of the names for some of these pieces are 
and some of these pieces may not be the same as what's in your tool but basically this is the way all of these air motors operate we've got the air coming in through the feed hose from your air compressor and it goes in through this hole right here when you open the valve the air comes out through this center hole through this port and into the back of this piece there is a hole or a port that comes out through the side we can see my allen key moving around in there so the air travels out through that hole we've got the locator pin lining these pieces up together like that so the air then travels along here between the body of the tool and this slot the motor housing is aligned using the same locator pin and the air travels into this channel again being sealed by the body of the tool so at this point we have air running in through the back of the tool and into this chamber in order to get out of the tool it has to come out through these exhaust holes and then out through these chambers on the outside of this brass piece into this half moon cutaway and then exit right here because the air is going in through this chamber and has no way to escape except to come out through these exhaust holes it has to pass by this rotor which is sitting in there like this so what happens is the air is rushing very fast out through these exhaust holes and causes the rotor to spin now normally we have these fins in the rotor like this so as the air is rushing through the motor it blows on those fins and turns the rotor one thing that you will notice if you compare this rotor or this motor to the motors in my other videos is that this rotor or main motor shaft is extremely small 6.72 millimeters and in inches it is 262 thousandths we want this to be really small and so we're giving up some efficiency and some torque in order to achieve that small size so in my other air motor videos I talked about holes in the front and rear motor assemblies uh, ports that actually push the vanes out into the motor walls and you will see in this tool it doesn't actually have those um, ports so what this counts on is the fast air rushing over the rotor to get it spinning so once I get this back together I will show you guys if I take and I hold the end of the tool with my fingers and then give it air it is very easy to stop it from turning you need the rotor to be turning fast to have those vanes fly out against the wall and cause it to seal before you can get any torque with these